Hi guys. Welcome to this video. This video is about confusing verbs. Sometimes, we use them instead of each other and it is wrong. Okay. Let's start. Some pairs of verbs in English have subtly difference with each other and can be confusing. This is because the pairs have similar meaning but are used to describe different kinds of actions or situations. In other case there are verb pairs which cause problems because we use them to describe similar situations even though they have opposite meaning. We call them opposite pairs. First, we speak about false synonyms. The first part is about make and do. Make often means produce or create. Alice is going to make a bridesmaid's dress. Buddha is made in Holland. Make often expresses the idea of building and constructing. The multinationals are making a lot of products in the developing world in these days. Make is used to express a process of change. The meaning is similar to become or cause to be. Those new drugs seems to make him very lethargic. Make plus object plus infinitive. Means. To force or command. The police officer made me empty my pockets. Make sometimes means, earn or keep an appointment. He make $1,000 a week on the oil rigs. I cannot make it on Friday. I am in a meeting all day. An attempt. An appearance. An appointment or arrangements. A bed. Phone call. A charge for something. A choice. A comment. A contribution. A decision. A difference. A discovery. An effort. An enemy of something. An inquiry. An exception. An excuse. A fire. A fortune. Friends with somebody. A fuss. A gesture. Good or bad job of something. A habit of something. A journey. A list. A living. Love. A mistake. A mess. A remark. A sound. A speech. A start on something. A suggestion. Time for something or somebody. Trouble. War. Money. A noise. An offer. A plan. A point. A will. We often use do, to describe an activity or to mean carry out or complete a task. Examples. What are we going to do for your birthday? Take part in an activity. You can go out after you've done your homework. You have completed. We can use, do plus determiner plus verb plusing, to describe regular tasks at home or at work. We do the stock taking every Saturday morning. Your best or try hard. Business with somebody. The cleaning. The cooking. A course. Some damage. The dishes. Your duty. An exam or a test. An or some exercise. An experiment. S be a favor. Good. Your hair or nails or face. Harm. The homework. Yourself an injury. A job. The laundry. Military service. Research. The shopping. Sport. Your teeth. Brush or clean. Well or badly. Be successful or unsuccessful. Have an appointment. Have an argument. Have a baby. Have a care. Have a chance. Have a chat. Have a dance. Have a drink. Have an effect on something. Have a fall. Have a fit. Have a go. Have an idea. Have a lunch. 
Have a meal. Have a quarrel. Have a race. Have a row. Have something to eat. Have a talk. Have a think. Have, no or the, time. Have a wash. Have a word with. Take an account of. Take an action. Take an advantage of. Take a breath. Take a care of. Take a chance. Take a decision. Take a dislike to something or somebody. Take a effect. Take exception to. Take an offense of. Take a part in. Take a photo. Take power. Take precedence over. Take responsibility for. Take a risk. Take root. Take trouble to. Take years or months or hours. Take the form of. Take a medicine or drug. Take a message. Take or have a bath or shower. Take or have a break. Take or have an exam. Take or have a guess. Take or have a holiday or vacation. Take or have a look. Take or have a nap. Take or have a rest. Take or have a seat. Take or have a sip. Take or have a stroll. Take or have a swim. The next part is about, gone and been. Gone and been, are used with similar but slightly different meanings. In British English, we use, been, not gone, when we express the idea or visiting or going somewhere and then leaving or returning. Examples. Jane has just gone back. She has been to the doctors. She went and came back. Lay. It means. To put something or someone down in a flat position. Example. You will find the process easier if you lay all the parts on a work surface. The next part is about. Lay and lie. Lay. It means. To put something or someone down in a flat position. Example. You will find the process easier if you lay all the parts on a work surface. Lie. It is used to describe a state of being in a horizontal position. Example. You will find the process easier if you lay all the parts on a work surface. The other meaning for lie is. To say something which is not true. These verbs have different tenses. Lay, is infinitive. Laid is the past tense and past participle. Laying is present participle. For lie, laid, lain and lying are different tenses. And for the lie, lied and lying are the other tenses. Lie. It is used to describe a state of being in a horizontal position. Example. You will find the process easier if you lay all the parts on a work surface. The next part is about, speak and talk. We usually use speak not talk for formal speeches when a person in authority is addressing an audience. Examples. The Prime Minister talked to the Parliament this morning. Before the election the President spoke to the nation on television. We usually use speak, not talk, for formal speeches when a person in authority is addressing an audience. The Prime Minister talked to the Parliament this morning. Before the election the President spoke to the nation on television. We use talk for long conversation. Examples We were up half the night speaking. We were up half the night talking. There are a number of expression with speak or talk. Speak up. Could you speak up? I cannot hear you. I would like to talk about our new sales strategy. You are talking nonsense. I strongly disagree with what you are saying. The next part is about three verbs. Arise, rise, and raise. Raise. It refers to the action of someone or something lifting, 
increasing or moving something else in an upward direction. To rise refers to the movement itself. Example, the government has been urged to raise corporation tax rates to match those in other European Union states. Rates are predicted to rise by 10%. Because, raise refers to an action done to something or someone else that always has a direct object. Examples. Fares will raise next year. It is wrong. We should say. They will raise the fares next year. The other point is that, raise cannot have an abject. Example, they will rise the fares next year. It is wrong. We should say, fares will rise next year. In formal English, we sometimes use, arise, to refer to problems or difficulties occurring. Example, tissue rejection is a problem which can arise in this procedure. Arise, does not have an abject. Let us hope nobody arises the issue. It is wrong. We should say, let us hope that issue does not arise. These verbs have different forms. Raise, is the infinitive. Past and past participle form is raised, and present participle is raising. Rise, is infinitive, and rose is the past form, risen, is the past participle. Arise is infinitive. Arose, is the past form. Arisen, is the past participle. Arising, is the present participle. The other part is about, rob and steal. We use, rob, to refer to the person or place that suffered the robbery. We use, steal, to refer to what was taken. Thieves stole my uncle. It is wrong. The correct sentence is, thieves robbed my uncle. A gang stole the head office. It is wrong. The correct sentence is, a gang robbed the head office. They robbed his gold watch. It is wrong. The correct sentence is, they stole his gold watch. We can use the preposition, from, to link to steal from a person or place. For example, Colonel Blood stole the crown from the Tower of London in 1935. We can the proposition, of, to link rob with the thing which was taken. For example, no man has the right to rob another of his freedom.